Kelly here and I'm back with another video. This video is featuring some new products from Hero Art. This is the, which is the focal point of our card, the um, box of chocolate fancy dies. I'm also going to be using the Loving Sentiment strips, the Your Mine bundle, which is the stamps and the dies. And then this um, Mini Hearts Bold print, which I love and I actually have another video where I use that one as well. Here, I just wanted to, because this is something we never really talk about, and it was something that I really didn't know when I first got into card making. Um, these little nippers are from Hero Arts, um, but they're designed to get in there and clip off all those little teeny tiny metal pieces. Uh, before I had these, I used like jewelry clippers, but the tip is not as fine, so it's a little bit harder to get in there to clip the metal. Um, I used to just twist them and then all like those parts that like hung on like those long pieces would then embed in my cardstock um, and it was just something like nobody ever talked about and I realized I haven't really either so since I hadn't cut these dies apart I decided to just leave it in so that way if you are new to the industry and you're like how am I supposed to get these things apart this is how this is the right <laughs> this is the right way to do it um, and then I just put my die like down inside my garbage can typically for those little teeny tiny metal pieces um, just because they sometimes can kind of fly around. So what am I doing here? Here I just have a piece of copy paper and I'm trying to figure out how many dies I need to cut now. Not everybody is this kind of planner when it comes to their card and you certainly don't need to be. But if you are like me and you don't like doing several die cuttings, which I don't, um, I try to pre-plan. So I kind of traced out the amount of candies I knew I was going to need. And then I also, there's like a wrapper um, that's included. And since I knew that I wanted to use that with the vellum to like look like the kind of tissue paper that the candies usually come in, um, I also traced these as well, so I knew how many I needed. I used the classic vellum layering paper. I had a piece that I had already cut for something else, so I'm just going to use that because um, you guys know how I feel about using on my stock. And then um, I'm going to cut all my candies out of white, to like totally not necessary. And then the box I cut out of cherry colored cardstock and the bow um, and the ribbon I cut out of plum. Um, but the reason I cut them out of white is because I knew I wanted to Copic color them. That is, to me, that's like the part that I enjoy, but I totally get that not everybody wants to chase die cuts all around their desk and die cut them. Um, so don't feel like you have to do that. You can cut it out of colored cardstock um, and it would still look super cute. Several of the... Um, other people on the Hero Arts design team did just that and it's adorable. So here I've kind of laid everything out so I know how many I need. Because I didn't cut them apart as individual dies, um, I just ran them through um, all still attached together. I ended up with a couple of extras which is fine. Um, I just, you guys have seen my little white plastic bowls. I just keep them in a bowl as I'm die cutting them out. And then I'm going to get into the coloring. So this first strawberry, first of all, I think these strawberries are totally adorable and I think that you could do really cute cards with them that had nothing to do with chocolates or Valentine's Day. Um, but I'm going to show you how I would color it if I was just coloring the strawberry because I wanted to give you that option because I do think you could use really, like you could use these for super cute, even like summer cards um, or other things that weren't necessarily chocolate covered strawberries and so what I did was I left a highlight in the top left hand side and then along the right hand side that highlight on the right hand side is a smidge too big and you're gonna see um like as I go through i doing my coloring as usual lightest to darkest darkest to lightest but as I go through, um, I'm going to shorten up that highlight a little bit just because it was just too big and I didn't like the way that it looked. Um, but you can obviously do whatever you would like to do. You don't even have to leave a highlight with the coloring if you don't want to. You can add that back in with a white gel pen um, and not have any issues. So here is where I decide I'm going to go back in and just um, make that highlight a little bit smaller. And then the... For the greenery, I just did it darker at the base 
Um, and then lighter on the tips, three color blend is probably a little bit over the top to be quite honest. Um, you could probably get away with just a dark and a probably like a mid tone cause you'd still want them to blend. Um, but you do have to have some darkness in there and I didn't even go very dark. My darkest was a YG 17. Um, but there's a cute little strawberry. And then if you really, really want to like bump up the detail, you can use a white gel pen to the die cut itself cuts in like the little indentations where the seeds would be. Um, but if you just want to like bring your coloring up a notch, you could go in with a white gel pen. Now I'm not going to do that for the rest of the strawberries. I just wanted to show you so that you, um, would have that like knowledge in your arsenal if you have picked up the die or if you choose to pick up the die. Um, here doing the greenery the same exact way, but really I'm going to color the whole thing because, um, the chocolate, it, it lays on top of it, but you can still see it from the side. So I'm going to color the whole thing. And this first one I did, I actually thought that you might be able to see a little bit of the, um, like shadow underneath the chocolate. And so that's why you see me doing that line up there at the top. You can't even see that. So for the other two, I completely ditched that line altogether and just added shading right underneath the, um, greenery and a little bit down the sides. And then I called it good. See here, you can see, you can't even see the line that I put in there. So for the chocolates, I'm going to show you all my color combinations. I chose warm grays. I chose a, um, like a cooler, like, I want this to be like my dark chocolate, the E seventies. They're very desaturated. Um, and then I chose a good warm brown, um, E25 is called milk chocolate. Like, I mean, how could I not go with that? But then I'm going to do all of the coloring of all of the candies with these combinations. Um, when I first started, I went into it coloring like I normally would, you know, with like tons of detail and making sure that I got all my colors in there. And this was really unnecessary. Like I could have just added a little bit of shading and it would have been sufficient. Um, but you can do whatever, whatever works for you. Um, once I had the white chocolate lines in, um, and you do always want to start with your lighter color versus your darker because your lighter color will pick up your darker colors. Um, so that's why I did the white first and then I'm going in with the chocolate. The, well, they're both chocolate, I suppose. Then I'm going in with the browns. <laughs> um, so that way I'm not, you know, picking one up and kind of dragging it through the other. Um, but then I'm just going in and I'm adding pretty much just little triangles of darkness. I'm also adding little lines underneath the white um, portion, like the portion of the chocolate that is supposed to be, what is the word that I want? Dripped. That's not it. That's not the word that I'm thinking of, but that'll do. So I checked this on my strawberry and I realized it just wasn't dark enough. So I went back in with an E29 um, to make it a bit darker and just like a richer color to match the kind of boldness of that red. Um, but yeah, so all of the chocolates are pretty much, they're like the same but different. I tried to do a variety of combinations like you would see in a genuine box of chocolates. Let's talk about box of chocolates, okay? I was very spoiled <clears throat> growing up. I was very, I was, because my mom made candy, like she made it. So I am very like, I guess I'm picky. Um, like my favorite candy bar is a Hershey's chocolate bar. Is that the best chocolate in the world? No, but I'm happy with just plain milk chocolate. However, when it comes, like when it gets into things that are filled, um, most, most, I, I don't know that I've ever found a box of chocolates that was like actually delicious. Usually like back in the day, they used to come with the, um, like the, the sampler, you know, the Whitman sampler, um, they, you know, used to come with like a, like a guide, like a key, if you will, like a map. And it would tell you what was what. And then there was no like guessing game. There was no Russian roulette of candies, whether or not you were going to get that gross fruit filled one. 
you know what I'm talking about. The one that nobody wants to eat. And like all of a sudden you're eating dark chocolate with like orange nougat and you don't even know what just happened to your life. Um, so like they, they used to come with a key so you could pick out which ones you want. I like caramels. That's like my go-to. My mom makes such great caramels. Uh, but they're total pain in the tushy to make because you have to like paint the chocolates up the side in the mold and then put them in the refrigerator and then you have to well the way my mom makes caramel there's a couple of different ways that you can do it but the way that she does it is she boils a can of sweetened condensed milk and then it turns into caramel and then she just kind of like scoops it spoons it in and then you have to paint the back of the caramel on and then put it back in the refrigerator to set but they are the cat's pajamas they are so good um but anywho so I'm usually good if I go with a square like if I pick a square out of a box of chocolates nine times out of ten it's gonna be a caramel and I'm okay with that it's the round ones that are tricky like the round and then like the mounded ones like you don't know what you're gonna get is it you know something that has like raisins in it or is it like dark chocolate mousse that's delicious I would eat that all day um the only chocolate I really don't care for is white chocolate to be quite honest not that I won't eat it if I'm totally hard up for chocolate because I'm not that picky um but so recently was it for Christmas I think it was New Year's my mom um actually one day when Nathan was over there visiting they made chocolates um and so she made like all of our favorites which for me is chocolate covered oreos I, because she didn't make the caramels the caramels are my favorite let's just be clear here um but i'm very grateful that my mom thought of me and spent any time making me anything because i'm grown and have the capabilities of making it myself so it was just kind of her to think of me um so i got chocolate covered oreos my oldest sister got peanut clusters and not regular peanuts, Spanish peanuts. And I didn't really even know that there was a difference, but apparently Spanish peanuts are saltier. I also eat those. And then my middle sister got chocolate covered pretzels, um, the minis and the rods. Um, I eat all of them. Like they, like we sat down, mom had like the bags and she was like, okay, who wants what? And they're like, I'm good with just my bag. And I was like, but I can I have some of yours? <laughs> but like, is it greedy if I want some of yours as well? Like, I'll give you some Oreos, but they didn't want them, but I wanted theirs. And then, um, the other day when we were at my parents, which is a whole different saga, um, I told my sister, I was like, listen, I don't think that you can just have the peanut clusters anymore. Like, I don't think they can just be your bag. I would like, I would also like some peanut clusters because they're delicious. And they're one bite. It's perfect. It's like the perfect after dinner sweet. Just one bite. The Oreos can sometimes be a little thick and maybe a little bit too much. This, let me tell you how sneaky my kid is. This is hysterical. Um, oh, wait, we got to talk about, we're going let, to, let's finish up this candy and then I will tell you my, my sneaky child story. Um, so you can see most of these are basically, you know, either they're a lighter with a dark on top or they're darker with a light on top. I threw in some reds in there um, just to make the box look more interesting. But this one that I'm about to color over here on the right hand side is actually the wrapper. And I wanted to show you, it almost looks like one of those, um, like the, what are they called? Pitzel cookies, Pincel cookies. Um, and so even though it's a wrapper, I colored it as a candy just because I wanted to show you that pretty much if you would, <laughs> if you commit to it and you put color on it, that makes it look like it's supposed to be what you want it to be. People will believe you that this is what it is supposed to be. Um, you could also do these as, um, like the peppermint candies if you wanted to color them like that that this is totally a believable shape for peppermint candy um you know you don't have to necessarily go chocolates but I did so let me tell you my sneaky kid so in my house growing up we always had sweets I just told you my mother made us candy and um because of that like all of us eat candy but none of us are like oh my gosh I have to have it and it's the same thing with like pop or chips like 
we were never denied those things. They were moderated, but like we could, there was never a time when it was like, no, you can't, you can't have this because it's, you know, you, whatever. Like it just wasn't that regulated, especially as we got older. For the background of this, I just wanted it to be a little bit more interesting. And so I am going to stamp these hearts in uh, clear embossing ink, and then I am going to heat set them in the white uh, satin pearl embossing, which you guys know I love this on white because it gives such a beautiful, like elegant kind of shine in the background. So, so pretty. Um, but then, so anyway, like my child is kind of the same way. Like he, he's allowed to have chips. He's allowed to have candy. He's allowed to eat those things or have pop on the weekends. Um, but he has to ask permission. Like he cannot just go, you know, in his candy drawer and binge on whatever's in there. Like he has to say, Hey mom, you know, can I have whatever? Or after dinner, he'll be like, can I have some ice cream? And nine times out of 10, it's yes. The only time it's no is if he hasn't eaten well for dinner and he's given me a hard time about it. Um, so the other day I w he came home from school and, um, my dad had picked him up, dropped him off. And so I was upstairs working and he, um, came upstairs, kind of chatted with me for a minute. And then he went downstairs to get a snack. And after, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes or whatever, he yells up the stairs and says, Hey mom, can I have a cookie? And I'm like, yeah, you can have, you can have one cookie. That's fine. And I just continue on doing my thing, you know? whatever. So then, um, wait, hold on. What am I about to do here? Oh, here, I'm going to add a little bit of shading to this die actually cuts kind of like an inside edge of like what the box would be, like the inside of the box would be. Um, and so I'm just going along that area where it die cut and adding a little bit of shading to help the box look more dimensional. And so that my candies are sitting inside of it. Now, you may be telling yourself, like, Kelly, why would you need four colors of Copics if you're coloring on colored cardstock? And the reason is, is because it helps it blend into the cardstock. So I started with my R59, which is obviously much darker than my cardstock. The R29 is getting closer. In real life, the R35 is probably a pretty spot on match. But because you have all of the moisture in the marker, it does make it a little bit darker. So going over it with the R32, even though it is substantially lighter than my cardstock, it's going to help blend that R35 out so that it's smooth into the cardstock once all of the alcohol dissipates and that moisture is gone. Um, so just so like I don't look like a crazy person, like, oh, look at her coloring that dark cardstock with that light marker like a lunatic. That is my reasoning behind it. Then we're going to put in all of the little vellum pieces. And so I just flip them upside down and then I put a little dot of adhesive behind them. Uh, I, if you have ever worked with vellum before, you know that you could see most adhesives behind vellum. They have specialty adhesives, uh, but it wasn't that serious. So I just put a very small dot of um, glue on the back of it. I chose Tombow when I multi-glue in case I wanted to use it as a repositionable. Um, when I'm gluing something down permanently, I would use the Hero Arts Precision Glue, but because I wasn't sure how this was going to go and if I was going to like it, I wanted to give myself an out. So now that I have them done, I'm going to line them all up and I'm going to cover the whole um, inside of the heart and then I'll build my candies on top of that. So anyway, he, you know, can I have a cookie? Yes, you can have a cookie. And then we just went on about our day. So the day after, maybe two days after, we're, I'm downstairs, we get done with dinner. Part of Peanuts chores is to um, do the cups, plates, silverware, you know, anything but the pots and pans and knives, really, um, after dinner. So Eric and I are standing in the um, kitchen, like, packing up the leftovers. Nathan's doing the dishes. Caitlin's happily munching on her after dinner cookie. Um, and like, just to be clear, they're arrowroot cookies. Don't come for me. Um, 
But anyway, I looked over and the bag that had my Oreos and it had like two left. And I was like, who has been eating my chocolate covered Oreos? And this kid turns around and looks at me and says, I asked you if I could have a cookie. And he's not wrong, but he knows, like, he knew exactly what he was doing because that was not a regular cookie. Like, we had cook, we had regular Oreos, we had cookies in the pantry. That, when he said, can I have a cookie, ain't nobody thinking he's talking about a chocolate-covered Oreo. So he was sneaky about it, and, and he, I gave him permission, like, he wasn't wrong, uh, but it was a little bit sneaky, <laughs> so we were laughing about it. Um... So here what I'm doing is I'm just adding some white, like white gel pen details just to make them more interesting. I added white highlights to my white chocolates. And then here is the part that the video, the headline of the video is about. So I've always used glossy accents. And to be quite honest, I didn't really know there was an alternative for making something glossy until Hero Art sent these to me. So this is, it's their lacquer pens. This one is the crystal clear. Um, and it is a pen version of, I mean, it's very similar to glossy accents. It dries super fast and it's very easy to use because it's in this pen format. Um, and it's almost, I think the same bottle as like their glue. So it has like the fine point nib and it dries super quickly. Um, so it was so easy to just like go into all of those little uh, like die cuts and add in just a little bit of like real life shine and dimension because you know it dries dimensional. Um, and I didn't even know it existed before they sent it to me. So I thought maybe you guys didn't know either. So here what I'm doing is my sentiment. This is more plum cardstock and I am... Um, this be mine. I am heat embossing on plum with the white detail embossing powder. And then I'm going to heat set that. I also used a sub sentiment from those, um, like the loving sentiment strips that come with the dye that again, I will show you a little bit more in depth, um, in an upcoming video that I have. Um, but yeah, so like, it's not that like I don't I, I I don't feel like I deprive my kids, but there's certain things that like the, it's just it's a no go. Um, and so I try to let them have something sweet after dinner. I try to be good about that because I enjoy something sweet after dinner, but only after like the, he's actually eaten a healthy meal. Miss Caitlin, I do not have to worry about because she pretty much eats anything that I put in front of her. <laughs> She's such a good eater. And I hope that she continues that as she gets older, that she has such a wide ranging palate um, because she will be open to so many more opportunities um, than I was because I am more of a picky eater. So anywho, um, building the card. So I glued my lid down flat. I added my little ribbon and, um, well, both of them are ribbons, my ribbons and my bows. And then, um, I'm going to put my box of chocolates in place. Now you may notice that I'm putting it up a, a smidge higher and that's just so like, we have a lot of tissue paper in there, guys. Let's be real. So we're going more for like a box half eaten look, you know, kind of like after everybody else in the family has got to it and then it's the next day and you're just trying to scavenge up something that is delicious, you know, the whole time being like no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Um, so I glued that down with a little bit of foam tape. Here I did notice one of my little vellum pieces was not sticking. And like I said, it's probably because I used the other glue that does dry repositionable and I probably just didn't move fast enough. So I just used my Hero Arts glue and stuck it back down. And then I'm gonna put a few more um, of these candies kind of like falling out the box. Um, one of the strawberries and then one of the, like the little heart chocolates and I think one of the square or the rectangles just to, um, just as you know, a little added something to make it a little bit more interesting. This is, I'm going to be honest with you, I should have popped this up, but I didn't want to take the time to die cut anymore. 
and I didn't want to go through with this scotch tape that I've been having such a problem with and do all of the little bits. So I adhered it flat. And I understand that I have to accept that that means it looks different than how I pictured it in my mind, but I'm pretty sure I'm okay with it because I just could not fathom fighting that scotch foam tape for one more time. Like I just couldn't. I've been making a lot of die cut cards lately and I've just been having to chop up that scotch foam tape all the time and I could not do it for another card. So I'm, I'm calling it good. Now, this one, again, I did not know this was a thing because you guys know I love my Stardust Stickles. This is Sparkle Clear Lacquer Pen, which is basically the equivalent of Stardust Stickles. Like, it's a clear glitter and it takes on the color of whatever you put it on, which is why Stardust Stickles is my favorite. Um, because... It just takes on the color of whatever's behind it. So it literally goes with anything. And then I don't have to own 500 bottles of stickles. So I didn't, like I said, I, this is just something that I found that I'm sharing with you. This also dries dimensional. It does look white in the beginning, um, but it does dry down to be clear. Um, and I'm just, I really enjoyed those products. I'm super happy they sent them to me. If you are looking for close-up photos or more detailed instructions, this is being shared over on the Hero Arts blog today. Um, you can head over there to check it out and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.